In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a histogram when you are not given the intervals and you have to come up with the intervals yourself. The first thing you have to do is find what's called the class width. The class width is going to tell you the amount of numbers that is included inside of each class or interval or group. Those are all names for the same thing. To figure out the class width, you're going to do the following. You're going to find the range, which is the highest minus the lowest number, and you're going to divide by the number of intervals that you want to create. More than likely, the problem that you're working on is going to tell you how many intervals it wants you to create. In this case, notice they want me to divide the data into five intervals. So let's go ahead and look at these scores on a math test, 94, 96, etc. They're not in order at all, but I can tell that the highest number right now is 100. Okay, I'm just circling one of those hundreds. And then I have to figure out what's the lowest. So right now I'm scanning the problem. I see a 46, a 47. Oh, I see a 30. So far, 30 is the lowest. I see a 35, but 30 is still the lowest. So the lowest is going to be 30. So the highest here is going to be 100. The lowest is 30. That's my range, highest minus lowest. And they want five intervals. So when I subtract, 100 minus 30 is 70. So I'm going to divide 70 by 5, and it's going to equal 14. Now, something interesting has happened. I get exactly a perfect integer. I get 14 as my answer when I divide. No matter what answer you get when you take the range and divide by the number of intervals, you must round up to the next whole number. Meaning, let's say that right now this answer gave me 14.1. You would round that up to 15. If it gave you 14.3, you round it up to 15. 14.7, you round it up to 15. 14.9, you round it up to 15. But if it gives you exactly 15, you would have to round it up to 16. So in this particular case, the fact that I have it exactly at 14, that tells me that my class width is going to equal 15 because you must always, always, always take that answer and round up to the next whole number. So now that I've determined my class width is 15, I'm going to start by writing my intervals. So I'm going to go ahead and label this frequency distribution table exactly the way they want me to. So I'm going to write down the interval, the frequency, the relative frequency, the true class interval, and the class midpoint, which is also referred to a lot of times as the mid interval value. Okay. So now that I figured out the class width is 15, my interval is going to start with the lowest number. So it's going to start at 30 in order for me to include 15 numbers, including 15 numbers is the same as adding by 14. So here it's going to go from 30 to 44. And if you don't believe me, take your fingers and start counting 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. That includes 15 numbers, okay? My next interval is gonna go from 45 to 59. So including 15 numbers is adding by 14. Then I'm gonna go from 60 to 74, 75, to 89, 90 to 104, okay? Also notice that here to go from one to the other, 44 plus 15 is 59, 59 plus 15, 74, 74 plus 15 is 89, and 89 plus 15 is 104. So one of the things that we have to do next is figure out the frequencies. The frequencies, there's two ways you can do this. You can right now start looking for all the numbers that are from 30 to 44, meaning start scanning the numbers until you go 30 to 44. So I have 30, that's 1, to 44, so 40, that's 2, 35, that's 3, 
And I think that's it. I think the frequency is three. Okay. So the other way that I like to do the problem is to do a tally. So in my tally, I'm actually going to start by going number by number, crossing it out as I use it, and then doing a tally next to the interval. So 94 goes here, 96, 46, 88, 90, 88, 96, 75, 69, 47, 88, 100, 96. So that's a lot of numbers and that took quite some time to do. So yes, we were correct. There's actually a frequency of three in my first interval, eight for the second one, five, 10, and 15. And one of the important things that I like to do is if in the problem they tell me exactly how many numbers I have in total, then I just add them up to see how many I have included in my data. So here is 11, 16, 26, so 41. But then I also like to count them in case, like in this particular case, they haven't told me how many data pieces there are. So I'm going to count them just to make sure that I haven't messed up and I haven't missed one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, forty one. So sure enough, we have forty one numbers, so we are correct. All right. So now that we've done all of that, <laughs> it's a lot of work, right? Very tedious. Um, we're going to find what's called the relative frequency. Every time you see relative, it's relative to the total. So I like to have these as a fraction and as a percent. Sometimes you'll see them just as decimals. I'm going to show you all three actually how to do it as a fraction, decimal, and percent. So right now let's start with the first one. We're going to write three over 41. So that would be the fraction. The fraction is the easiest. Eight over 41, five over 41. 10 over 41, 15 over 41. Okay, basically you take each one and just put it over the total. Now I'm going to take the calculator and I'm going to go 3 divided by 41. It's approximately 0 0.0732. Okay, to three significant figures. And if I multiply this by 100, it's going to be about 7.32%. So I like my students to write them as a fraction and as a percent. I kind of skip that middle division part because either way before they put it to a percent, they have to divide. But again, it all depends on how the question wants you to have the answer or how your teacher wants you to give the answer. So 8 divided by 41 is 0.195 multiplied by 100, so 19.5%. The next one is 12.2%. 10 divided by 41 times 100 is 24.4%. And 15 divided by 41 is 36.6%. So I always like to take the percentages and I like to add them up together. In this case, take your calculator, 7.32 plus 19.5 plus 12.2 plus 24.4 plus 36.6. You're going to get a total of 100.02 which is approximately 100%. Okay, so we got 100.02%. That is fine. Why do you think we're not at exactly 100%? If you're thinking because of round off error, you are correct. Okay, all of these decimals that we have divided and multiplied, or all these fractions that we divided and multiplied to make them into percentages, we're actually rounding them. And because of that, we have a little bit of rounding error but notice this is approximately 100%. It's not off by that much. If you get 99.9, .9, 100, 100.1, 100.05, like those are all fine. If you get 95%, that's too much round off error. Or 105%, that's, that's too much. Somewhere along the line, there is a mistake. Okay, so we have done the intervals, the frequencies, relative frequencies. Let's move on to the true class interval. Why do we need true class interval? The numbers in my interval 
do not match. 44 jumps to 45. 59 jumps to 60. Because of those jumps, we will have a gap in our histogram in between the bars. And we can't have that because the histogram has all the bars touching. So to fix this problem, what we're going to do is create a true class interval by taking off half from the lower boundary and adding half to the upper boundary. So the first group becomes 29.5 is less than or equal to X, less than 44.5. Then 44.5 less than or equal to X less than 59.5. 59.5 less than or equal to X less than 74.5. 74.5 less than or equal to X less than 89.5. 89.5 less than or equal to X less than 104.5. Yes, very annoying, very tedious. I gotta admit, but that's how you do the problem, okay? And now there is no gap in between any of those intervals. The last thing we're going to do is figure out the class midpoint. To find the class midpoint, you're going to take the lower boundary, add it to the upper boundary, and divide it by 2. So 30 plus 44, which is 74, and then 74 divided by 2. That's going to give me 37. So the first class midpoint or mid interval value is 37. Then you're going to do the same thing for the next one 45 plus 59, you're basically taking the average divided by 2 is 52. And notice that the class width is 15. Do you see how if I take 37 and I add 15, I get 52? So the next one, if I were to add 15, I should be at 67. And we can confirm it by taking 60 plus 74, which is 134, and dividing it by 2. And sure enough, what answer do we get? 67. So again, if I go 67 plus 15, I get 82. And 82 plus 15 it's going to give me 97. So those are going to be my mid interval values or class midpoints. Now that we have completely finished the frequency distribution table, we are ready to create our histogram. That's the easy part. That's the fun part. Let's go ahead and draw our X axis and Y axis on the Y axis. We're going to label it frequency. We have to check to see what's the greatest frequency. If I look at the list, it goes up to 15. So perhaps I want to go up by 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I could have also gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 15. Then my horizontal axis, it says here that these are the scores on a math test. So we can say scores or true class interval. So... I'm going to write true class interval and I'm also going to write what it is because in this case it scores on a math test. And my first group is from 29.5 to 44.5. So that means I need a break in my graph and then I'm going to start 29.5 and I'm going to write each one of these. I don't know exactly how many I need. So 44.5. The next one is 59.5, 74.5, 89.5, and 104.5. So I didn't really need this very last one. We can go ahead and get rid of it. There we go. Okay, so now I'm ready to create my actual histogram. So now we are ready to go ahead and make the bars. The first one is going to go from 29.5 to 44.5 and the frequency is 3. So as neatly as you can, go to 3. Mine's a little sideways. And then the next one is going to go all the way to 8, then 5. The next one is going to go 10 and then finally 15. It's a little hard to do these freehand, but if you have graph paper, it'll be better for you. 
And then at the end, just kind of shade them in nicely. And there you're going to have your histogram. While I shade mine in, I want to remind you of a few things. Number one, every graph should always have the axes labeled. I see too many times students not labeling their axes. It's so important. Secondly, for your histogram, you got to make sure the bars touch. Very important. It is a bar graph where the bars are touching. Notice the numbers at the bottom correspond with the intervals. And also notice that on the y-axis, it's the frequency. So there you have it. This is what your histogram looks like. And this is exactly the process by which you're going to make your frequency distribution table when you are not given the intervals to use. And you first have to start by finding the class width. So I really hope this clarifies any questions that you have on how to create a frequency histogram.